What's up, people of the internet? My name is David Cab, and if you like winning games by smacking your opponent in the face, then this is the video for you. We're gonna talk about ways to win the game with Axe. Here comes the Axe. All right, so Axe is quite possibly the most unique hero in all of Artifact because he doesn't have a passive. Instead, he just has muscles, big old red muscles. He has a massive body at 7 to 11, making him an absolute beast on the battlefield. The most important number here is the two armor. Seven attack is not that exceptional, and 11 health is not that exceptional. But putting those together with two armor makes this guy damn near unkillable, especially since basic melee creeps won't even be able to touch him. To counteract this, he doesn't have a passive, but of course, you could sort of reason that his passive is just increased stats. So honestly, Axe's body is the main appeal of this card. He has arguably the perfect stat distribution. There's another hero that doesn't have a passive and instead just has massive stats, and that's Mazzy at 636. However, Axe's stat distribution is significantly better because two armor is the magic number. You're gonna get hit by two attack much, much more than getting hit by three attack. So you kind of get diminishing returns on Mazzy's armor. One armor matters a lot. Getting up to two armor matters a lot. Getting up to three armor matters not quite so much and getting four armor matters even less than that. So you could say Axe has the perfect body. Oh, he's just so handsome. <laughs> So he's going to be an appealing hero for a lot of players. So today we're going to talk about all the ways that you can win with this hero. And to top it all off, as if his massive meaty beefcake body wasn't good enough on its own, he also has a pretty impressive premiere card. It's not exactly like S tier 5 stars good, but Berserker's Call is pretty solid. Dealing Axe's damage to three enemy neighbors can really turn ties in your favor, and it could potentially kill up to three cards. Granted, getting hit by that many enemies can probably kill Axe, but the thing is he has so much defensive stats that he can probably survive, especially if he has a couple of defensive items. So let's talk a little bit about how to make the most of Axe. So first we'll talk about friendly heroes, heroes that have excellent synergy with Axe. The absolute top of the list is Legion Commander. Legion Commander's premier card is Duel, which allows you to target one of your red heroes, in this case Axe, and then target an enemy unit and those two fight. Now Axe is quite possibly the single best target for your duel in the game because as I've said, he's just so insanely strong. So honestly, Axe and Legion Commander these two are just lovers. They fit together perfectly like peanut butter and jelly. So if you have Axe in your deck, I would honestly consider Legion Commander to be an auto include. Legion Commander is just a really strong hero on her own and the synergy is just too good to miss here. Another decent possibility is Centaur War Runner. The thing about Axe is that he's so strong that the enemy player probably isn't gonna put a lot of things in front of them. Or if he does, then Axe is just gonna pound through him almost instantly. So there's a very good chance that Axe is gonna have a free lane open to hit that enemy tower. And in that case, Centaur War Runner's double edge can be used to buff up Axe and do massive damage to the tower. If you're thinking about running a red green deck, then you should definitely consider Magnus. Magnus's premier card has amazing synergy with Axe. His premier card in power modifies a unit, not just a green hero, but any unit with plus three attack and plus three cleave. Now, the thing with Axe is that he's already so tough that you don't really need to buff his defenses any more than they are naturally. Instead, I would consider buffing his attack because there's no such thing as too much attack. Either you're one-shotting whatever's in front of you or you're smacking the tower for insane amounts of damage. If you hit Axe with Empower, you're kind of giving the opponent a damned if you do, damned if you don't scenario. If you don't block Axe and you have 10 damage hitting your tower every single turn, seven base attack plus three from Empower. If you do put a blocker in front of Axe, then he's almost certainly gonna kill it with 10 attack and he's gonna be cleaving into the enemy neighbors as well. So this is really one of the best possible cards for Axe. It just makes him insanely powerful. He's either wiping out the enemy board or he's wiping out the enemy tower. Either way, you're winning. 
If you absolutely want to make Axe unkillable, you can consider Omni Knight for those extra heals. Alternatively, you could go with Enchantress or Tree and Protector to give Axe a little bit of passive regeneration or block. Personally, I think that's a bit overkill. You're probably better off going with offensive options instead. But of course, it is worth mentioning that if you could keep Axe alive throughout the entire game, then that's seven damage a turn coming through. In blue and black, you're not going to find a whole lot of synergy with heroes in those colors. But luckily, Axe is kind of like a white bread hero. You know, he's just kind of generic. So despite the fact that there's not a ton of synergy in those colors, nonetheless, he can fit in just about any deck that runs red plus blue or red plus black. So now let's talk about spell synergy. As we've seen from the leaks, Red has a bunch of very cheap spells built around Heroic Resolve and Rising Anger. You play these spells on a red hero, and then every time you cast a cheap red spell, that red hero gets buffed up. So Axe is really an excellent candidate, especially for the attack buffing one. The armor buffing one, not so much. You're probably better suited using that on a hero without any block. But the attack one is phenomenal because once you start rolling up Axe's attack, it'll be so difficult for the enemy player to deal with them. Also, despite the fact that Grand Melee itself is not a very good card, I will say that it has pretty solid synergy with Axe. After all, two cleave is exactly what Axe blocks. So even if an enemy hero does cleave into Axe, he won't feel it. I could sort of imagine a heavy red deck that runs Bristleback, Axe, Mazzy, maybe Timbersaw, and other very high armor heroes, as well as Grand Melee. The idea being that even though Grand Melee gives cleave to the enemies, all of these heroes have so much block that they won't even feel the cleave. Meanwhile, these red heroes with their massive bodies are mowing down the opponent's side, so there might be some potential there. Unfortunately, Grand Melee just sucks so much. I don't know if this synergy will, will really be worth putting it in your deck. So outside of red, there's a couple of spells that have great synergy with Axe. In green, we have Mists of Avernus. This improvement gives all units in the lane plus one attack each turn. This is a natural fit for Axe because he's so tough, he's likely to get that buff every single turn. And his attack is naturally so massive that pretty soon he will be demolishing the enemy tower. Another great green card to fit with Axe that you might not think about is Corrosive Mist. Now, of course, you're probably thinking that since Axe has such a huge body, he's a great target for items. And while to an extent that's true, the thing to keep in mind with Axe is that items will kind of equalize the playing field right? Axe has the best stats in the game now, but if you put a Fernline Cloak and an Apotheosis Blade on Zeus, then suddenly Zeus is a stronger hero than Axe. Axe doesn't like that. He likes being the strongest person on the battlefield. So Corrosive Mist is actually a pretty tempting option. The idea is that even if you do destroy some of Axe's items in the process, he just won't care because he'll go back to being the biggest hero on the battlefield. Meanwhile, if you destroy huge weapons, huge armor on the opponent's side, then they go back to being pathetic little two sixes or whatever their natural hero bodies are. So I could definitely see Corrosive Mist fitting into a red-green deck that focuses on cards like Empower, which we mentioned earlier. Because if you use Empower, Rising Anger, those types of cards, then you get buffs through spells rather than through items. So you won't really be affected once you play Corrosive Mists. Meanwhile, your opponent will probably be hit quite hard. There's a bunch of excellent axe synergy in blue as well. The most obvious option is Diabolic Revelation. This card deals two damage to all of your units in order to draw two cards, but of course it only deals two damage and not piercing damage, so axe won't even be affected by this. I could see this card fitting into a blue-red deck that runs Mazzy, Axe, Bristleback because they just won't care. It'll make the downside of this card not even a downside at all. You'll hit a couple of creep, but that's basically it. Blue also has a couple of cards that tinker with combat, Ventriloquy, Cunning Plan, and Messenger Rookery. If you're running a blue-red deck with Axe in it, you might want to consider running a couple of these cards to make sure that Axe is hitting the units that he wants to hit. Next up, let's talk about items. Now, with a hero as tanky as Axe, you might be tempted to give him more defensive items, such as leather armor, fur-lined cloak, whatever. But I would really encourage you to pump the brakes on that option because giving defensive items to a hero that's already one of the 
tankiest heroes in the game is really kind of overkill, especially if you're running a red deck along with another color like blue or green. If you've got a leather armor, don't put it on Axe. Put it on your Zeus, put it on your Luna. They need it much, much more than Axe. It is probably the case that if you put leather armor or some other defensive item on Axe, then it might not even make a difference. He's just so tough. Odds are pretty good that he can go through the entire game without dying, even without any items. Throw in a couple of healing salves and fountain flasks, and he's just tanking enough on his own. Instead, I think your best option is to focus on offensive items. Give him a couple of decent weapons, and he will just start mowing down the opponent. Blade of the Vigil and Stone Hall Pike are both excellent options for Axe. He doesn't need super expensive 25 gold items to be useful on the battlefield. If you give him a cheap under 10 gold items, then he can quickly start snowballing. One thing to keep in mind when you're buffing your axe is that there's a little bit of anti-synergy with plus attack and plus cleave. Obviously, the more attack and the more cleave you have on axe, the better. That being said, they have built in anti-synergy because the way cleave works is that you either attack a unit and cleave into that line or you attack a tower and do not cleave at all. So heroes with very, very high attack are probably less likely to cleave as a result of that. So I'm not saying by any means that cleave is bad on Axe. In fact, the opposite, cleave is fantastic. It's just, unfortunately, you're not always gonna get that cleave to activate, especially if Axe is one-shotting whatever's in front of them. All right, so let's talk about weaknesses and anti-synergy. Right off the bat, some of the biggest anti-synergy cards is Divine Purpose and Hand of God. I watched a VOD from PAX where someone played Divine Purpose on a full health Axe. And it was so painful to watch. Oh my God. Why? Like, what's the point? Why would you ever want to do that? Axe is already so insanely tanky that giving him damage immunity is completely redundant. So while Divine Purpose and Hand of Gods are quite good cards, I don't know if I would really recommend putting those into decks that also run beefy red heroes like Axe and Bristleback. Speaking of Bristleback, he is one of the biggest enemies of Axe. Viscous Nasal Goo will take out Axe's two armor and leave him actually somewhat vulnerable to enemy attacks. If you hit Axe with two Nasal Goos, then suddenly he is downright squishy. The thing about Axe is that his defining strength is his high armor. It's the perfect level, and Viscous Nasal Goo kind of takes that advantage away. Next up is Ursa. If you have Ursa in front of Axe, then those two will smack into each other twice, and in the process, Ursa will shred Axe's two armor, leaving him at zero. So next time those two heroes come back onto the battlefield, Axe will be at zero armor, and Ursa will be at full health completely untouched. So not really a great pairing for Axe. You might want to watch out for that hero. And the biggest threat to Axe is Centaur War Runner. This is a slightly advanced technique, but Double Edge can actually be used on your enemy cards. So if the enemy has Centaur War Runner and Axe is up against, let's say, a melee creep, Centaur War Runner can actually hit your Axe with Double Edge, giving him minus eight block. That will take Axe from two block down to negative six, meaning Axe is taking an extra six damage from all of his attacks. That melee creep will not be dealing two damage, he will be doing eight damage total to Axe, leaving him with a very small amount of hit points left over. So be mindful of that. Centaur War Runner is actually added to decks specifically as an anti-red tech card. And Axe is honestly one of the most tempting targets to use. All you need is one simple chump blocker like a melee creep, and the negative armor will do the talking for you. The other hero to watch for is Crystal Maiden. She has a much smaller body than Axe, but Frostbite can really lock down an Axe turn after turn. So now we'll move into basic strategy with Axe. The idea with Axe is that he can do so much on his own without items, without spells, that you're able to get early kills either on creep or on heroes, which translates into an early gold advantage and then that translates into an early win. I could see Axe being especially effective in a red black deck. You use Axe and other heavy hitting red heroes like Bristleback to get early kills. That gets you early gold. Then you double that with Payday, give those heroes strong items, and from there it completely snowballs out of control. As for Berserker's Call, there's not a whole lot of finesse to this. Just look for opportunities where you can get the most mileage and hit three units with it. Granted, there's probably a decent chance that it's gonna kill Axe, but actually 
killing three enemy units in exchange for your hero is not a bad trade, especially if you take down an enemy hero along with you. And on top of that, don't be afraid to use this to just take out three enemy creeps. After all, it will give you three gold and it will open up the lane for Axe to start smacking the tower. If you compare it to Eclipse, also at six mana, Eclipse actually won't be able to take down three melee creep on the turn that you get six mana. So in this case, a red spell is actually much stronger than a blue spell. So the idea with Axe is just to be a headache for your opponent, especially in the early game. Either you put units in front of him, which will almost certainly die, giving Axe gold, or you leave him open to start wailing on your tower for massive damage. So those are my tips and strategies for getting the most out of Axe in your red decks. Let me know what you thought down in the comments. If you have any other ways to use Axe effectively, let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Dabacab out.